Okay, we're going to start with rack number one. And as mentioned uh, on my emails, on rack number one, two, and three, they're very similar. So I'll just demonstrate number one on loading. But the best uh, recommendation that we can make is to remove the initial finger off of these existing racks so they fit better on the holders. But uh, they still work in this application. So you pull the handle down, closes the jaws, you push the foot pedal down, and it opens up and you can load the components this way. And that's all it takes. So again, you just put it in the slot and here and close your jaws. So again, one, two, and three, we need to remove the fingers on the ends and then it should uh, be safely held in the rack holders, okay? Four and five are pretty much very similar. Now these have a larger spline that fits um, in the holder. And again, we pull the arm down and the jaws close on the rack. And then we push the foot and then we load the rack up. And then you just release the arm. And then you spin and then you load the other side. Just like that. Okay. Okay. So now we're moving to the four-sided rack. And we made this special tip for the four-sided. So this just slides right in. In a position like that. Um, height adjustment is done with these clips. And so now we're ready to close the jaws. Push the foot pedal, and you can load your parts. Now we have to remember that the symmetry of these fingers is not equal, so each time you do a rotation for a longer side, you will have to adjust the heights. So this little spring clamp is how you adjust the height. So in this case, this rack has long fingers that are a little bit taller. So what we want to do is bring this down a little bit. The two sides should work fine that are equilateral. The other two that are longer, once you adjust those, they should work fine as well. Okay, so now we're going to move to unracking. So I have rack number one again. And these are the unracking plates. So before we were racking, we used these two holders. Now we're unracking. And these are removable. They're just a height adjuster. And also there are, might be times where you may need to put shims underneath these plates. There's a little uh, screw on the bottom. You unscrew these and it moves. So you can move these in and out. And um, these also can be removed based on the height of the finger on the rack. So in this case here, we're going to take these off because this is a short finger rack. So you just, again, this rack here, my recommendation is that we remove this one finger just like I mentioned early because we have only this little amount that's hanging onto the edge. So, but basically you close the jaw like you're doing the, um, uh, racking and then you push the foot pedal down and then there's a lever here on the right hand side you pull the lever up and then you release the pedal and as you can see the gap now is shorter and that's the way it's positioned for the unracking uh, portion of the process so what you do is you put your rack in there that's loaded with parts. And now instead of using the handle to put it down, 
since it's closer, you just push the foot pedal and the fingers are squeezed and they drop into a canister or however you want to configure it underneath the machine. The parts just drop down. And then you let the foot pedal go and then again it doesn't go all the way back. It's in an unracked position. You flip your rack over and then you just push the foot pedal and it unracks the other side. So that's the unracking for rack number one, two, three, and four. This is the plates that you would use. So now for five, six, and seven, we had to come up with a new design and we have to change out this plate. And as you can see, there's a completely different design. We had to come up with this to accommodate the uh, four-sided racks because there's no spline on the end again. So this one basically slides in like this. You move it forward a little bit. And then once you're in position, you slide it back. And then you just push the foot pedal and it squeezes and drops your parts. And then it opens up and then you rotate, you move this forward, slide that in there, pull it back against the jaw, close, squeeze, and the parts drop below. And again, this little special fixture rotates and slides in and out depending on the length of the rack. And this will work for five, six, and excuse me, six, seven, and eight. And this is rack eight. And this, by the way, is a 24 inch manual racking machine. So, one last time, we'll go through the unracking process. So, you push the foot pedal down and you lower the lever and then you release the arm and it goes to the fully open position of the jaws. So again, I'm gonna step through for unracking. You push your lever down for your jaws. You push your foot pedal down. You lift the unracking lever up and then you release and it minimizes the open. It doesn't go all the way to the back anymore. And so now you don't have to use a hand for the lever. You just use the foot pedal and use both hands for the unracking process.